Show 2022 is almost here and I'm going to be testing, hopefully, for my Journeyman Smith test. With that said, I gotta forge a bunch of knives, so let's get started. All right, so here's my preform. It went pretty well considering I haven't hand forged a knife in a long time. I consider the preform to be the most important part of forging because it's really what sets up everything from there. No grinding, no nothing. I can make a knife out of this right here, but I obviously want to gain some width. So from here, I'm going to move on to hand beveling the edge. And then, if it's good enough, this might end up being one of my JS knife set. If not, it's certainly going to be a good practice piece. Here's a little forging montage with some elevator music just for our friend Lucas over at Man Made in MA. pretty happy with this however it's not exactly the shape I was looking for for this first knife that I wanted to make I'm going to finish this completely out we'll see if it's part of my set either way I forged my first hand forged knife in a long time and it's pretty good by the way this is ADCRV this is my preferred material for a knife blade it's designed for knife making it's not just a random steel that happens to work for knives so from here, I'm going to do a couple heat cycles, and then I'll uh, grind this bad boy. Pretty happy with it. By the way, this episode is sponsored by The Axe and Iron Podcast. That's right, our friends Chris Cash from Mount Phillip Metalworks and Roy the Psychopath Scott from Vintage Axe Works run a podcast. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's a great listen while you're working, perhaps on your long drive home like me. They go over everything from talk and shop to crazy stories about El Chapo killing someone in the bathroom. So if you're looking for a great podcast and you haven't yet tried out the Axe and Iron Podcast, give it a listen. Thanks, guys.
All right, I just want to take a quick second to address a few concerns that we've heard through the pipeline that some ABS members are having about me testing that all stem from a video we posted a few months ago last fall where Ilya said that he was forging a bunch of knives for me to practice for my JS set. Now, I don't want to say that this is anybody's fault. This is my fault. I film all these videos. I also edit them. So the context that I heard what he said was me talking to him for a few days prior about what he was going to say, what he was going to do. So my context in editing, I heard it the way that I wanted to hear it. If you really take yourself and remove yourself from that context and listen to what he said, I can see how it could be confusing. Some people thought that he was intending on forging my blades and that I would do all the grinding for my actual set. That's not the case at all. I'm going to be doing every single bit of work on all of my knives, including my performance test knife. Everything is all me. What he simply did was he provided me about a dozen blades, rough forge, that I could practice my plunges, practice my symmetrical grinding, practice my guard fit, my heat treat. It gave me a huge jump forward to get me to where I am, slowing my work down. I worked at BKS for 20 some years where we rushed everything, do it as fast as possible. So having a dozen knife blades that I could practice slowing down, practice doing things right, practice making everything symmetrical and crisp really was a huge advantage. So I just want to say I'm very sorry for anybody that took that out of context. I most certainly am not trying to pull a quick one over and have Ilya forge my blades and I'll do all that stuff. I'm going to be doing all the work. The other thing that happened in that video was some people felt like we were being very negative to the ABS, specifically some of the things Ilya said. In no way do I have negative thoughts about the ABS. It's the whole reason I'm going down this journey is to become a journeyman smith, but also if I didn't get the certification, just going down the path in the very strict guidelines and the fit and finish and just all the crispness that you have to learn to even get to that step to test is really what I want. I want to challenge myself. Could I do it? And that's what's most important to me. I'm taking this 100% seriously. I am most certainly not expecting to get a pass just because I'm a who's who or anything like that. I want to be judged even more critically than anyone else because of my past. So I just want to put that out there. I'm taking this very seriously. We don't have any ill thoughts towards the ABS. I'm very, very thankful for this opportunity to test a blade show. So with that said, we got some more knives to make. Alright, after the heat treat, I just did a quick file test. Just want to see that file skating across the surface. If it bites in at all, then you don't have a very good hardness. But this is plenty hard, so now I'm going to go ahead, put it in the kiln, get it tempered, and let's go ahead and forge another one. For this second knife, we're going to be using Ilya's technique that he shared in our most latest Your Edge video. Let's see if this works better than how I forged my first one.
All right, that method definitely is killer. I'm obviously not as good as Ilya is at it just yet. It's my first time trying it, but I got my plunge line forged in a little bit. I got much thicker material here at the Ricasso. I got a little bend I don't want, but from here I can grind off, and this is gonna be a definite usable knife. So I like his method a lot, and because we hot cut the tip off, we got the grain going the way it should. So in theory, this is better. Let's grind this one. Now that I'm done the rough grinding, it's time to move on to the heat treating phase of this knife build. First I'll be doing a couple normalizing cycles where I hit the blade up to a red hot color and then let it cool very slowly while clamped in a vise. After that, put it back in the forge to heat up one last time and quench it in oil for hardening and then straight into the kiln for tempering. I find that clamping the blade between two 2x4s quite tightly right after the quench really helps keep your blade nice and straight. Once it cools down to a couple hundred degrees, I stick it in the kiln. So one of the reasons I've referred to this blade as almost good enough was the fact that my plunge lines are almost perfect, but this one side had like a little step to it. The other side was perfectly radiused, and the other side had a little step. And I kind of was like, well, that's not good enough for my set. However, I just got these handy dandy little hand sticks where I can rotate fresh grit as I go, and it's allowing me to actually sand that out slowly and but surely and possibly get this the knife to condition to where I do feel good about it. I'm using an optivisor because 
I'm talking this step is so small that I can hardly see it with my bare eyes. So I'm just slowly going over this. Because really, and I believe when the judges look at your knives, the very first thing they're going to do is flip over and they're going to look at your plunges. Are they symmetrical? Is everything in the center? Are they the same? Um, and before they move on to anything else. So the first thing that I want to do is make sure that when they look at that, they don't have to look at it very long, that it's super good, super clean, nice and symmetrical, and even, and then they'll move on to the rest of the knife. And uh, yeah, so I consider this to be, from a judging standpoint, I've helped a lot of people who went on their JS journey where they've showed me their knives, at least half a dozen people where they showed me their knives before testing, and that's the first thing I look at. So if it's the first thing I look at, it's probably the first thing the judges are going to look at as well. Now, do I think this tiny little detail is enough for me to fail my JS test? No, I don't. But one of the things that's been repeated to me over and over when I've consulted with other JS smiths and master smiths is that these should be the five knives that are my absolute best that I've ever made. And I can make a pretty darn nice knife. I've made a lot of them. But one of the details I don't really stress too much about is this being absolutely perfect. And if this is my one way, or at least one of the ways, for me to go from where I am to the next level to present the best finished knives that I've ever done, then this is the step I'm going to do. And to be honest, if I was teaching a bladesmithing or a knife making class to an intermediate class or a beginner class, I probably wouldn't even stress this too much. I would show them how to do it on all on the grinder get your plunge really nice, uh, use a file guide, all that kind of thing, use a file before heat treat. But I probably wouldn't stress this little detail because this knife is a very nice knife if I didn't do this detail. It's a great user. I don't think too many people, if any, would pick it up and gripe about it. But we're going for next level stuff here and I'm getting judged on it. So every little bit's going to count. I'm actually in a group text with some other guys that are taking the JS test this year. And one of the things that I've said to them is make sure you're, you are your worst critic. Be your own worst critic, but also be your biggest supporter is kind of one of the things I say. So critique your knives to the nth degree, but also be positive, be encouraging to yourself so that you can get through this. Because no matter how much time you have now to blade show, if you let yourself have seven months, or if you're in my position, you have two, you can do it. You can get it done. Where if you've gotten to this level, then you have the skills necessary to complete this. So I want to be my biggest critic, but also at the same time, I want to keep encouraging myself, saying I can get this done, I can do this, I can make these the best, and get through it. So far in this video, I've been forging practice knives or knives for my JS test set. Now for the test set, I have to present five finished knives to be judged by my peers, by other master smiths. But what I really need to do first is to forge my test knife that we do the actual performance test on. For the performance test, it has to chop a 2x4 all the way through, then it has to still shave, and you have to cut a, I believe, one inch rope, clean, free hanging rope, meaning it's not attached anywhere it's just free hanging cut that through no edge deformity and then you do the craziest part of the test which is a 90 degree bend so that knife has to go all the way clamped in a vise has to bend all the way 90 degrees without snapping it can crack a little at the edge supposedly but i believe i can do it without any edge cracking at all using 80 crv with a proper heat treat so without further ado, let's go ahead and forge this knife. I'm going to use 80 CRV because I believe it's one of the only steels made modernly that is specifically made for knife making. And I know it very well and I know how to heat treat it and I know how it performs.
for the heat treat on this blade, I'm going to do something that I would never do on any of my actual knives. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways you can do this differential heat treat where you get the edge hard and leave the spine nice and soft. If I was to do that on any of my actual knives that I would sell to the public, I would either do a full quench with clay on it or I would do a full quench and then I would use a torch to draw back the temper. I'm going to try a couple different test blades and do a couple different heat treats, but first I'm going to try an edge quench into oil. This is 80 CRV. When I quench it in there, it's going to flame up. I hate flaming quenches. I don't think they're good. You're destroying your oil when you flame quench every single time. So I've made a little trough. We're going to quench just about a three quarters of an inch of the edge in. The rest is going to stay glowing and it's literally going to go in. I'm going to agitate for a minute and then I'm just going to let the blade sit there until my body of my knife and the handle portion come down to a dull uh, black color. And then I'll quench the whole thing and go to temper in the even heat kiln for about an hour. All right, now that I've successfully heat treated my test blade, it's time to start doing the final grinding. It's kind of thick here towards the point, so I'm going to add in some taper first, do some rough grinding on it. Now on these test blades, it's kind of encouraged to not add in a very definitive plunge line because that could be a snapping point. Um, so I'm probably not going to do that. I'm just going to get my edge to where it needs to be. We'll do some cutting, and then we're going to do the most important test, which is the bend test. All right, I got my knife ground and polished. It's just a 220 finish with a Scotch-Brite hand rub. Now, what I did was I ground this way on a platen sander to get nice and flat with a slight convex towards the back. And then I went up and down on a contact wheel. And the reason I did that is my thinking is it's getting rid of all those little lines that could be micro fracture points. Um, Everything's going this way. It's nice and smooth. So now I'm going to go ahead and sharpen it and then we'll try doing some cutting. So the 2x4 chop test worked. I don't have any edge deformity at all. So that part's good. Took me a little too long and my angles on the chop aren't so good. I'll practice that and get better. But let's go try to do the bend test. Right, now's the moment of truth. I'm going to use a piece of pipe that goes over my tang and start bending it. Now the goal here is to get 90 degrees. So. Because I'm using pipe for leverage, I got to go a little bit past 90 degrees. Now if we hear a pop, don't fret, I'm allowed to have a little bit of the edge crack. I think it's a third of the way through or something, but let's hope that doesn't happen. I'm just going to take my time and see how this thing bends.
Oh boy. Close. Oof. Getting this far is already pretty impressive. But I've never done this. I'm going to be destructively testing this blade all the way to failure, bending it back and forth until it breaks. But that video will only be available to my Patreon, so consider subscribing, and you can check that video out. Starting to get a little tough. I should really make a machine that does this. Well, my handle's at 90, but my knife isn't. Getting close. Getting real close. Is that about 90? I'd say that's 90, but let's keep going. For science. That's for sure 90. Past 90 now. Way past 90, right? We've done quite a bit in today's video. I forged successfully two blades for my test set, my ABS Journeyman test set, or at least you could say they're test blades for my test blades. I haven't decided whether or not this blade will be in my actual uh, five final knives in my test set or not. The only real problem with this knife is that I was really focused on all the technical stuff being correct when making it, and I don't feel like I have a lot of me in this blade. It's just kind of a knife. so. Maybe this will be in the set. I can still alter it a little here and there to put some of my signature in it. But really the most important thing we did today is we got this knife made. I wasn't really worried about the bend test. However, I had never done it. So of course I was a little stressed out about it. I'm gonna make a few changes on my actual journeyman test performance knife. And that is I'm gonna add a little less taper to the blade so I get my bend more in the middle, less on the end. Um, but overall, cut well, the edge didn't deform, the heat treat was pretty well. I don't know if I'm going to use that exact style heat treat or not, but nonetheless, we have success. Since I know a lot of you guys are going to ask me what this steel is, we call it 80 CRV. It's actually 80 CRV2 from the New Jersey Steel Baron. If you guys want to make the best knives, then you got to start with the best steels, and they are by far the most consistent knife supplying steel out there. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, do so by clicking the little round that works logo right here. And if you didn't know, Your Edge series is back. And if you haven't seen the latest Your Edge video where Ilya takes us through how to hand forge a knife, why to do it, he shows both practical explanations as well as explaining it through physics, then check out that video and click right here.